Welcome back, viewers. Today, we will be testing the McGinley Dynamic Indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched my first video and the videos after that, you need to go do that right now. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. You can find a link to the first video down in the description below. You can also find a link to our Discord server, so that way we can all discuss testing indicators and building our trading system. And lastly, you can find a link below to TradingView. If you sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money using the link below. Before we get into testing today's indicator, though, I wanted to put the indicator scoreboard up for everybody to see. So to date, we have tested 32 indicators, and out of those 32 indicators, 10 of them have been winners, which means that they have either met or exceeded the 60% win-loss ratio threshold that we have set. The best one so far has achieved an 85% win rate. That is a very respectable win rate for a single indicator to achieve. So, out. So, as we are working to build the best trading system possible, you could take any one of these 10 indicators and you could jump out there and start trading the market profitably right now. So, go back and watch those videos, make a list of those indicators, and jump out there and see what you can do with them. But stick with us here at the channel as we work to maximize your trading profits. All right, as I said, today's indicator is the McGinley Dynamic Indicator. And it is actually a moving average. And I am going to test it a little bit differently than any of the other moving averages that we have tested yet. I don't think we've done this with any of the moving averages yet. So when you first pull up the McGinley Dynamic, Again, it is a moving average. And since it's a moving average, it automatically plots it up here on the price action chart. What I've done is I have moved it down to the pane below. And I have added another moving average to the McGinley dynamic. Basically kind of creating a, a moving average crossover. And that way we can kind of play with this and see what the McGinley dynamic moving average can achieve um, when you put a, another standard moving average um, with it as a crossover. Just something a little bit different than what we normally do. The standard moving average is set to nine. I think I am actually going to change it to 10. Yes, we will change it to 10. And basically, it is a two line cross at this point. It is a moving average cross. And so, when the uh, McGinley, the faster of the two indicators, crosses the slower of the two indicators, the orange indicator, if it crosses up above, we go long. If it crosses down below, we go short. And that's how we're going to test it. We're going to play around with it just like that and see what we can achieve. The McGinley uh, dynamic uh, moving average was created to be a better moving average. That's what McGinley had in mind when he created it, was a moving average that was better than other standard moving averages. So we will see what exactly we can get out of it. All right, so unfortunately, we've got a little bit of a whipsaw right there where it gave us a, a short signal, then popped up for a long signal, and then back down for a short signal. But it does look like 
Yes. We did get this one here. Looking back, it does seem to catch the overall trend moves pretty well. Doesn't seem to be much different than our regular moving average. The McGinley is set to a 14 period. And again, our, our standard moving average is set to a 10. So let's see, we got a long there. And we got a win. Seems to be doing a reasonable job at um, catching these these wins. So far, pretty good. It does have its drawbacks. which we'll discuss in a moment, but we'll keep plugging along to the end of the year and see what we get out of it. We are close to the end of the year now. I think we can squeeze out one more winner here. That was a winner. And there we go. That puts us at the end of the year. So let's tally up what we got out of the McGinley dynamic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's thirteen total trades. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight winners. So that does meet the 60% that we look for, which is not too surprising. Again, we've tested the moving average cross and it also uh, met the criteria, the 60% criteria that we're looking for. And so it would stand to reason that unless the moving average is drastically different in some way, that we're probably going to get about the same results when using um, other moving averages. And that's why I don't test every single moving average. Maybe one day we'll play around with it just to see uh, what they do and how they act differently. But for the most part, a moving average is a moving average. And it's kind of plotting and using the same mathematical equation to, you know, plot the line on the chart. Now, as I probably said back when I did the moving average videos is that what I don't like about moving average crosses is that they often are too slow to react to get you in to a trade. And what I mean by that is, let's see, here is a good example right here. Let me minimize this window some right here. So as you can see, we had a clear reversal and it started turning into a nice downtrend and it was almost halfway through by the time the McKinley and the moving average, the standard moving average called the signal. That, even though it was a win, left a lot of profit on the table that we could have gained had we gotten into this trade earlier. Now, as an example of what I mean is I'm going to move the McGinley back up onto the chart now. So you can see the same trade right here had we simply just put the McGinley on the chart and waited for price action to cross, we would have gotten in one, two, three, three, 
days earlier, roughly, which would have been an additional eighty. No, sorry, fifty-eight pips. An additional fifty-eight pips on this particular move. And so, even though it's not a huge extra amount of pips, when you are growing your account, every single pip counts. Every single pip matters. And so, uh, the more you can get is the quicker your account is going to grow. And so, you don't want to be leaving uh, money on the table. And you can see it happening, um, you know, in you can see it happening in quite a few of these moves. You can see it happening right here. We would have gotten in a hundred pips earlier right there. And with this one, we were about 60 pips earlier. And so that would have given us um, about an additional 160 pips right there. Uh, let's look at this one right here. Oh, sorry. If we would have gotten in here instead of there, 77 extra pips. And so, as you can see, you start adding up very quickly. Before you know it, you're an extra three, four, five, six hundred pips on the year and just this particular pair. So, that's why I'm not a huge fan of the moving average cross. You have to. Uh, speed them up to to a point to where it makes sense to get these extra pips and then you start getting a lot of really bad signals from it. So uh, that is my uh, two cents on moving averages. Like I said, I probably already explained this in the moving average videos that I did before, but it's worth mentioning again. Uh, and so yeah, the McGinley dynamic with a moving average, it works. And so it may serve a purpose somewhere within our system. And so therefore, we're going to put it on the yes list and move on from there. If you have not already liked this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that way you are notified anytime I post a new video. As part of the team, it's important that you are seeing the new videos as they come out so you know what it is that we are discussing and what indicators we are testing, have tested, and have not tested. Also, like usual, there is a link below in the description to the Discord server. You can join us on Discord so that way we can further discuss the indicators and have discussions as we move forward building our trading system. And lastly, like usual, there is a link below to TradingView. If you like what you see whenever I use TradingView and you are interested in signing up for TradingView, if you use the link below and sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money. So, all right, everybody, I will see you on the next video.